completely changing the traditions of menswear and bonding her fresh and unique designs to her work, the genius behind it all, Bianca Saunders. So when it comes to Bianca Saunders, her expertise focuses on the construction of menswear, bringing her own modernistic designs to her work, which include elements of women's wear onto menswear. And what's so diverting is understanding her thought and design process to her clothes and how she unshamefully includes her background and culture to her brand. And then hearing her design process, it becomes so clear how her vision and creative ideas is translate directly to her clothes without giving you a complete idea of what she has made or what she's going to create. So what is her background and creative process? Saunders was born in Southeast London where she still lives and at an early age she had an interest in dressing up. Also having a big family who supported her and encouraged her creativity at an early age. She always had an interest in making stuff and she felt like that was the first thing she was pretty good at. Eventually being accepted into Kingston University, later being accepted into the fashion MA course at RCA which is a fashion master course at Royal College of Art in London. This is where she studied under the head of program Zoe Broach. There she presented a graduate collection which was inspired by a band her uncles formed back in the day. They played a mix of reggae and funk where they had a skinhead style to their clothing as well. So a skinhead style is basically made up of denim jackets, suit jackets, hair team jackets, bomber jackets. <laughs> She remembers looking at their old photos and being both British and Jamaican, she always enjoyed both cultures. Her friend and fellow designer saw Nash since the days at RCA once stated, the way in which she combines her culture in a timeless and authentic way, he says, I had never really seen her approach with such a modern outlook before. And it's really cool to see how a colleague back in her college days has this to say about her work and you can still say the same thing about her work to this day. And that just goes to show how true she is to her brand and what she makes. So her fall winter 2021 collection alluded to dance hall culture along with old VHS tapes. So those tapes were showcasing dance hall culture and she always thought that culture was very interesting to her. Her goal is to use things in her brand that are close to her so she can pick up on them and really figure out what they're about rather than trying to figure out something that is not close to her. She even remembers taking a step back from her brand to really find herself in her brand due to the lack of persona in the brand. Since putting herself in the brand she's feel like she's made her best work back in 2018 she was selected by the british fashion council as a brand to watch later in 2021 she won the andam award with previous winners being martin margella with a panel including phoebe philo and then in 2022 she made her paris fashion week debut which is crazy i feel like every designer's goal is to make paris fashion week and the fact that she did that is definitely a huge accomplishment so now that we have a better understanding of her background and kind of her design process i really want to take a look at her work and what she's doing in menswear so i think the perfect way to analyze bianca saunders approach to menswear is having masculinity as the building block while incorporating unique and feminine elements to menswear without invading the fine line between femininity and masculinity masculinity. So I want to focus on just her 2023 collection just because that's what her most recent so her fall winter collection and her spring summer collection of 2023. So the spring summer collection was entitled Heart Food inspired by Jamaican meals which include foods such as yams, plantains, and dumplings. Focusing on the makeup of hard food, the outside of the food is going to be different from the inside. When you think about yams and dumplings, they both have a different textures, different feelings, different tastes based on the inside and the outside. Taking that into the collection, Bianca Saunders wanted to focus on the duality of the exterior experience and the interior reality. So the way she includes the idea of hard food into the collection is on these t-shirts. When you first glance at these t-shirts, the makeup of these t-shirts are pretty much a composition of colors. You see the different greens and yellows, but when you look closer, they're actually the yams, the plantains, and even the dumplings. So I think she did a good job of giving you a great visual of the color composition of the shirt, but then when you look closer, you see it's actually an image of the title of the collection, where she did a great job of incorporating the colors and the image. So seeing through the entire collection, one thing that I really appreciate is you don't see nothing too out of the ordinary, more specifically avant-garde. Almost everything can be included to your daily wear while still staying true to Bianca Saunders. You see her attention to detail to the collars, the materials, tailoring, proportions, silhouette, and most specifically her drapes. And this is the feminine element that I've been alluding to throughout the video. And I feel like she's mastered the drape including it into menswear without making it too excessive to the point where it doesn't feel like menswear anymore. 
and it even feels masculine still. One of the most obvious use of drape is the noticeable silk button down. That drape she uses on this piece is very subtle but completely changes the dynamic of this piece. Something that may be looked over is the play with collars on the knitteds. That slight detail of the collar where it seemed like somebody cut them right down the middle of the garment while overlapping one side of the collar over the other. With that feature I feel like it adds to the drape going vertically down the garment. There's also other pieces that come with the drape that is still subtle. And what she did with the pants is kind of contort the seam from the inner thigh to come down to the front of the pant down the leg. And you also see that split hem detail used on some of the pants throughout the collection as well. In addition to the collection, I really enjoy the alternatives she has in the collection. You see three or four denim jackets she uses in the beginning of the collection, all having their own silhouette, tailoring, and cuts, making each denim jacket feel like their own while still staying true to a denim jacket. And you see this with the play of the trousers and the suit jackets throughout the collection as well. For the fall winter collection, you're getting the same thing but it's still different. Her drapes are different, her tailoring is different. She has new patterns to the loungewear, new silhouettes to the knitted, elongated jackets and suit jackets. But I wanna focus on the drape again for this collection. The way she makes it seem like the drape is coming across the placket of the trench coat, giving it that wave-like pattern completely again changes the idea of the trench coat. Once again, her play with the images, how you can barely make out what the image is, making it look like it's pixelated or has low resolution. You really see the idea of the color theory for that piece. Once again, you see that those colors actually make up an image, which obviously there's a meaning behind. And as you can see, there's a continuation of the collar details, the tailoring, the materials, keeping it really Bianca Saunders-esque. And if you want a more deep dive into the collections, you can go on Bianca Saunders' website where she has a breakdown and a very detailed description of each collection, which was obviously more detailed than what I'm giving you. She also incorporates film into her work like we were talking about earlier with her 2020 collection using those old VHS videos. She also has a recent collection with Gucci and Alessandro Michelle, along with the filmmaker Akinola Davies. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Throughout the entirety of the video, her clothes were filmed or featured on a male's body, giving you a good idea of what the clothes look like outside of a runway or fashion show feel. The film just talks about the male's personality, what they look for in a woman, what their dream date is just a very nice film very nice aesthetic very nice production all around film that shows bianca saunders what she's capable of making as far as the clothes that she's made and also even contributing to this film and how it was produced so with that being said let me know in the comments how you feel about bianca saunders approach to her work as far as her feminine elements the draping and then even taking away the feminine elements out in some of the garments that just have those uh, unique tailoring details those unique proportions and silhouettes do you enjoy what she's doing do you not do you think it's a brand you would buy from in the future will you look forward to your new collections or will you just disregard what she's doing in the menswear and fashion field which is nothing wrong with just your preference and what you like or don't like i do have to say this is great seeing a black woman really contributing to the fashion world the way she's doing and the recognition she's getting even though i do feel like she's still underrated slightly but the things she's done in menswear is definitely definitely shouldn't go unnoticed so definitely big props to her for what she's doing but that would pretty much do for this video make sure you leave a like comment and subscribe on this video if you did enjoy it but that would pretty much do i'm out